Welcome to Circuits. Today's uh, Circuits joke is brought to you by Futurama. I like this one. If, I'm not sure if V is for velocity, volume, voltage, viscosity, or frequency. Because <laughs> frequency doesn't have a V. <laughs> oh, I like it. Um, all right. So let's talk about circuits themselves. I think a lot of people really struggle with circuits because I don't think we have any intuition for them. If you imagine we're looking at you know something being launched in the air, I, I sort of understand that because I've seen things fly through the air, right? We understand waves in some senses. So we have some intuition about these things, but circuits, a lot of people just, it's just gross. People just don't get it. So I'm trying to show you an analogy here that I think is going to help. But um, like analogies, I mean, all analogies are just that. I mean, it doesn't say exactly what electricity is. We're going to say it's, it's what it's like. It's like kind of this. A lot of analogies that teachers use, for example, is like with water, you know, water flowing down a hill is like what it is. But I don't think that really is a very good one. At least it's not good enough. Um, so I've modified one that I read about uh, that I actually really liked. So I'd like to show you this with chocolate. Uh, not with real chocolate, unfortunately, but with the imaginary chocolate. So this analogy is going to require um, a few things. And clearly, there'll be some places where this analogy fails as well. But what I think it really does is it gives us a sense of intuition. I think that's going to be important. In fact, we're going to try to sort of derive Kirchhoff's laws. We're going to see how it goes here. So let's see how far we get. So first of all, in this analogy, what I would normally do in a classroom, I would actually get all of the students up, standing up, and it's okay, everybody arrange yourselves in a circuit. And a circuit just means, you know, in some sort of way, like some sort of path for them to follow. And now in this analogy, so can you see that that's actually why I've got these little dots, for example, in here, those represents the students that are just sort of arranged in this sort of square or a circle or whatever. So in this analogy, the students are going to represent in the real circuits land, the coulombs of charge. So the students themselves are coulombs. So you have to think of that first. The good thing is, I think that that's going to help you to know that they're conserved. Because if you imagine you have a circuit and it's moving around, the number of coulombs don't change. Right? You don't like kill students. Well, hopefully not. Uh, that'd be messy. So they're conserved. They stay the same in the circuit. No matter what's going on, the coulombs themselves are fixed. They're conserved. They don't change. Now we're going to have, uh, now you have to imagine this. You have to imagine a student that I designate the battery. And that student's job is a really nice job. Their job is just to give out chocolate. So imagine if I'm the battery, I just have a bunch of chocolates here. And if you pass by me, I'm just going to give you a piece of chocolate. So that's going to be the rule of the game. So every time a student passes in front of the battery, that battery gives chocolate. In this case, we hear the battery, what it's going to give is electric potential. In other words, it's going to give one volt. So let's just say we say one piece of chocolate equals one volt. Remember, I'm not going to say voltage, so I'm going to say potential difference. I don't know, it has an electric potential. So if we measure something, we're gonna we're gonna see later on why we call it a potential difference. It'll make more sense in just a second. So we're gonna, you know, it's that's the quote unquote voltage. So just remember one chocolate equals one volt. Now the ammeter, uh, by the way, just before then, so this right here would be the rule of the game. So these these um, coulombs would actually just travel around the circuit, just like these coulombs right here will travel around this real circuit. I'm going to skip a little bit ahead and tell you about the rules of the game. First of all, the rules of the game is that the coulombs have to be smart. What do I mean? I mean, clearly they're not sentient coulombs. So in order to understand this analogy, this is where it fails a little bit. You have to sort of suspend some disbelief here, but that's the point of an analogy, right? It doesn't say, of course, coulombs aren't chocolate. It's just a way for us to help understand it. But to do that, you have to imagine that the coulombs, they're smart. They can see what's ahead so they can act accordingly. They can plan. And they've got to use up all their potential. In other words, they've got to use up all the chocolate before they come to the battery. And remember now the battery gives chocolate to each coulomb as they pass by. So what that means then is, and by the way, you're not allowed to hoard. You're not allowed to save up. So in other words, if I got a piece of chocolate, you know, so I pass by the battery, I got my piece of chocolate. As I go around the circuit, I have to eat it. And the important thing is eating chocolate. This is going to be the important thing because when you eat chocolate, uh, you know, you're sort of losing, uh, sorry, you're gaining energy, but you know, you can say that the chocolate itself is losing, you know, there's, there's chocolate being used. In this case right here, as you go around a circuit, you have to use electric potential. In other words, in this world's dumbest circuit here that doesn't actually do anything, can you imagine if you're a Coulomb, you pass by the battery here and it gives you one you know, piece of chocolate, in other words, one volt. That means as you go around the circuit, then you must lose one volt. 
And remember, electric potential is related to energy, so you're literally losing energy. And this energy lost is really important. This energy lost, in fact, is, a f um, is lost often through heat. So that's why circuits get hot. So for example, this really boring circuit right here, this real circuit though, is what we call a short circuit. Because can you see the coulombs themselves, they can just pass around right here and then they just come right to the battery. They don't really do anything, but they're going to have to eat up their chocolate, you know, like in this analogy. So that means if you walk around, remember, you'd have to eat your chocolate before you can get to the battery in order to get another one. You're not allowed to hoard and save up. So by that analogy, then, uh, if we look at real circuits, that means that you're going to have to use up energy. And when you do that, you actually, it's lost through heat. That's how it's lost. So this is why circuits get hot. This is why, you know, your phone, for example, my little phone right here, um, if I'm, you know, doing a lot of really tough things for my phone, like, uh, I don't know, on YouTube or whatever, and the phone gets very, very hot, that's because you've got a lot of circuits going on and things are really heating up because they really are losing energy in the form of heat. Now, we're going to have some detectors we need to bring into this situation. We've got someone called an ammeter. This would be a student in the class who I would designate as the ammeter. Their job is the worst job. Uh, their job is actually to just sit in the circuit. So part of the circuit is going to be key here. So that ammeter is actually going to be connected in, we're going to say, in series. What does it mean to be in the series? It means you have to be part of the actual circuit. So you have to be, you know, you have to have the coulombs actually passing right by you. I would have that student actually stand there with their arms out. It's the worst job in this. They would stand out with their arms out. And then as a student passes by, they have to spin. So if you imagine them, they're going to just sort of spin. And think about, they're counting students per second. Well, if you're an ammeter in this case, so you think about what's a student? It's a coulomb. So if you're an ammeter, you're measuring charges per second. You know, you're measuring coulombs per second. Now, wait, if you're measuring coulombs per second, isn't that the current? This is why this is the case here. So we basically sort of talked about this ammeter here, literally in this sensor here, right? So it's measuring coulombs going by per second. So that would be uh, connected directly in series. I like to think of it as like if you go to an amusement park, you know, sometimes you have to pass through this like little gate. You have to sort of like turn this little turnstile, it's called. So as you walk by, a little thing has to turn around you. Imagine that happening uh, in a circuit. The ammeter has to be part of the circuit in order to turn it to count people per second. It has to be part of the circuit so the coulombs have to pass right by it. By contrast, we have someone called the voltmeter. That would be someone in the class who's really tall. Let's say it's really, really long arms. And I would tell that student, your job is to use your arms you know, and put them around something. So what you're measuring, you're measuring a difference in chocolate. So what I mean by that is, what if I uh, connected my voltmeter right here? Can you see that? Um, if I did that, I would put my arms around this. And think about this then. If you're coming in this way, by the way, in the IB, it's not really so important which way the current actually goes. Because there's so, something called the electron flow current. There's something called conventional current. Uh, they go opposite directions. It's not so important to know the direction. Um, it is important to define opposite directions to each other. That's true. But, at, um, you know, when we're doing circuits later on, I'll show you that when it's important. But just to know that they're opposites. In this case right here, this is fine. It doesn't matter which way it goes. Imagine that if you're measuring a difference in chocolate here. That means, you know, imagine you're going around the circuit in this way over here in a clockwise direction. That means, you know, you gained a piece of chocolate here. That means you had to use it up and eat it while you passed by the circuit. That means when you come back to the battery, you've got no chocolate. So can you see the voltmeter's arms? Their job is to measure across something. That's why it's measured in parallel, we say, because that's measured across. It's not part of the circuit. It's sort of measuring a piece of the circuit. And if you measure across it, um, this right here will tell you something really important. It'll tell you a difference in chocolate. So what do I mean by difference in chocolate? I mean, coming in, you'd have zero chocolate. Leaving, you'd have one chocolate. So one minus zero is one. So you'd have a gain of one chocolate. In that same way, the voltmeter here measures a difference in potential. Remember, chocolate was potential. So in other words, that's why it's called a potential difference. It literally measures, you know, the volts. So if you're going to measure the volts, you know, you're measuring, you know, amount of chocolate. You're measuring difference in chocolate. So in this real situation, you're measuring difference in voltage or sorry, potential difference is what it measures. That's actually why we call a potential difference for a reason, because there's a difference in electric potential from before and after. So I think this is something that's really important. In another video, I'm going to define a lot more just to make it make a lot more sense.